Hello everyone, this is Latia for you coming today with another scripture from the Lord. We are in Psalms chapter 18 verse 6, Romans chapter 5 verse 3, Ephesians chapter 2 verse 9. Let's go ahead and pray and we can get started. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you for your goodness towards us. You are so, so good. We are so glad that you are our King of Kings and our Lord of Lords. It's because of your great grace, your great mercy, Lord God, that we can have anything, that we can, that we can be saved, that we are, are, are anything, God. It's because of you, not because of us. We love you, God. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, you guys, Psalms chapter 18, verse six. In my distress, I called upon the Lord. To my God, I cried for help. From his temple, he heard my voice and my cry. To him reached his ears. All right, and my cry to him reached his ears. All right, and so this is speaking about, um, distress right being in distress and calling upon the lord um the lord does not reply to us because of what we do right the lord does not reply to our desperate pleas because of who we are he replies because he's good right he replies because he's consistent he replies because that's the kind of God we serve, right? When we're crying out to him desperately and he knows his children are in need and we're being sincere about this thing and we're crying out to him, he he's a good God like that, right? He's not going to just ignore that. He's not going to turn away from that. He's our father and he's a good, good father, right? He's not a father like our fathers who are most of the time good, right? Who are maybe um, they have a bad day or or you got on their nerves. So they're like, eh, get away from me, right? Or something like that. No, he's the God. He's the father by which all father's standard is 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 measured and created, right? He is the perfect father. So when a perfect father hears a distress cry from his child, he he stops what he's doing and he turns, right? And he comes and he helps his child, right? It says, in my distress, I called upon the Lord. Do you call upon the Lord when you're in distress? Or do you call your mom? Or do you call your sister? Or do you call and, and talk to anybody who's willing to listen, right? You need to be calling upon the Lord because why? The Lord cares for you. The Lord is your comforter. The Lord is your keeper, right? He is your friend. The Lord is the one who's going to be there for you when nobody else is there for you. So you need to remember don't call the old people of the world, right? Old Mark down the road, right? Because he's dependable for a jump when your car is is dead in the winter, right? We're talking about being in distress. Don't call on people when you're in distress. Yeah, you can call them second. Maybe God will place somebody on your heart to call. But the first person you need to call is your father. You need to call on the Lord. And and he's going to answer, not because you've been good this week, because he's good like that. Amen. All right. And so it says, in my distress, I called upon the Lord to my God. I cried for help. My God, my God, is he your God? Is he your Lord? Call on him. Call on him for help. Start calling him in every situation of need. And then you're going to realize that you're changing, right? When you stop calling your brother, right? And, and saying, I need $50, right? Or when you stop calling on people and realize, you know what? I need to just call on Jesus and he's going to be my provider, right? Not is such and such dependable for um, helping me to get out of this situation, 
right? You need to learn how to call on the father and he's going to make a way for you. And you're going to start realizing that he has been keeping you. Yeah. You thought it was such and such, but it's been God who's been keeping you. Yeah. He might've used that person, but you can depend on God, not that person. Right. Sometimes God will even snatch people out of your your Rolodex. Right. Just so that you can turn to him. Right. So you can stop looking through that old book and seeing if you can find that number or going to go pick up that old phone to see if that number is in that old phone. No, you need to call on Jesus. Amen. He is your help when you're in distress. It says to my God, I cried for help from his temple. He heard my voice and my cry to him reached his ears. Sometimes when we've been living in a life of luxury, we forget about people, right? If you've been living comfortable for a season, maybe you got a new place, maybe you got a new job, you forget about you know, old desperation of people, right? Of of people that may still be in their their place of sadness or or whatever, right? So imagine God living in this lavish, beautiful, lush temple, right? And and things are things are absolutely gorgeous, right? He still hears you, no matter how beautiful his temple is, no matter what good is going on in the world that he's paying attention to God hears your cries and your pleas he hears when you are in desperate need he hears when you make that groan or that mutter or that not I don't know what to do he hears that and he turns toward things like that right God is a God who is a God of mercy He's a God who loves his children and he likes it when his children turn to him. Amen. So it says from his temple, he heard my voice and my cry to him reached his ears. When we are in lavish, beautiful situations, our ears can kind of become dull sometimes, right? To the things that God is saying to us, but God doesn't, God isn't like that. God doesn't allow his ears to turn off because he's, he's having a good time. His ears are always attuned to your cry. Cry out to him in your desperate time and, and don't allow, um, people to be your your saving grace all the time allow God to be the one who comes to save you Romans chapter 5 verse 3 is the second verse that he gave me not only that but we rejoice in our sufferings knowing that suffering produces endurance wow that now that's one y'all I just now started really honestly trying to do that. And like when I'm suffering, when I'm going through something and I feel like I want to blow a gasket over it, or if I'm feeling sad and down and out about it, y'all, I promise you, if you get a song in your heart, instead of turning toward that anger If you get a praise in your heart, just say, I praise you, Father God. I praise you in this moment. I praise you. I praise you. I praise you. You guys, when I tell you the spirit will move so fast on you, you will feel God's presence in that moment. He, you will feel. Feel him in that moment when you call on him, when you in a distressed manner, when you are going through a suffering, when you are are desperate and you feel like that ache of you just want to scream or you just want to cry. Don't scream. Don't cry. You can cry out to God, right? You can scream to God as long as you're in a quiet place or something. But let me tell you what you need to do. Rejoice rejoice why it's going to produce endurance right it's going to help you get better God loves it God turns when he hears something like that right he I I felt like when I did that y'all it was almost like 
God, like, you know how in that verse, I don't know exactly what it says right there where Stephen is getting stoned. Yeah, I think uh, the Lord stood up or came to him or something like that when he was getting stoned and beat down, right? But I felt like when I started singing and I was going through this stress, I was going through a very intense stress um, situation. And, um, I, instead of doing what I wanted to do, which was scream out and cry and be mad, I stopped and I just said, I praise you, father. I praise you in that moment, y'all. It felt like God, almost like he leaned in to look at me or something. I don't know. I I can't tell what he did, but that's what it felt like he did. It felt like he got closer to me for a second, right? And I was just like, this is good. Like, I I couldn't believe that. And of course, every single time, not be like that. I'm speaking that it is like that, but you know what? I'm going to do it from now on. I promise I'm going to do my best to remember to do that from now on. Holy Spirit, remind me in those moments to rejoice, rejoice, right? If you suffer with him, you're going to reign with him. That means that in in eternity, um, you, we're taking up royal positions, right? And so suffering here on earth solidifies your royal position in eternity. Hi, that's good, you guys. That's good. That's good. You have to rejoice because that suffering is producing endurance. That means it's making you better. It's making you able to hang on a lot longer than than before. How many of you out there have been going through something and you realize after you came out of that, you could hold on a little longer now, right? You you felt like you could run a race. You felt like, hey, it could, Lord, I could take it now, right? When something lesser comes along, you're like, it, that's not that other season that I went through, right? So you can endure a little bit longer. You can endure um, because you have suffered and you have rejoiced in your suffering. It says not only that, but we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance. It's the birthing process of endurance, right? That that means that when you are going through that stressful, straining moment, that moment that makes you want to just, just bite off all your nails and, and just throw something on the ground, right? Those straining moments, those suffering moments, the main moment you might be in pain the most, right? You, your body might be going through something, but if you rejoice in that moment, rejoice, you guys, rejoice, learn to rejoice in that moment. That That's not a, a kind of scripture. That's kind of like the one where I had told um, you guys that I realized that um, throwing your pearls to the swine was actually real. Like that's not just a concept. That is something that actually happens. You can throw away riches in heaven by saying things to people that you should not have said that Holy Spirit was trying to hold you back and you giving up the goods to people that are scoffers or are um are people that are not going to appreciate that Holy Spirit will reveal those things to you but if you ignore that you are literally throwing riches away the Holy Spirit showed me that this is like that right it's one of those moments you realize this is real right if I rejoice in my suffering it's gonna help me on the other side it's gonna make me better right? It's going to make me able to hold on better. And when I go through that situation that is stressful and straining, it I can just get through it because you know what? It's not that. I'm grateful. I can hold on longer. I can endure longer. I can know that, hey, the rapture's still coming. I'm not going to, I'm not going to spaz out about it because the high wa- watch didn't end in the rapture this time. You know what? I suffered through this thing. I suffered through fasting, right? You suffer through these things to make you better, to help you endure, right? To help you go a little 
bit longer. God is making you stronger. He's making you able to endure. All you have to do is just go through that thing and rejoice while you're going through that thing. God hears your cry of distress. God hears what you are going through and he cares about it. Amen. All right. The third verse that the Lord gave me was Ephesians chapter two, verse nine, not as a result of works so that no one may boast. All right, so this scripture is speaking about being saved by grace through faith, which is a gift from God, right? Um, it's not by what we have done that we are saved, right? It is by his goodness because he's a good God like that, right? And so we we can't boast about God um, as it relates to, oh, um, the reason why God is the way he is towards me is because I did such and such and such because I rejoiced, right? God is good. No, God is good because God is good, right? We can, we can endure better because we rejoice, but God is good because God is good. God is a giving God because God is a giving God, not because you did such and such and such, right? Um, he, we have to realize that it is by his grace that this faith is able to save us, right? He gave us this as a gift, right? His son, not because we had done, we weren't even born, right? We were, we weren't even born and he gave his son. So how could we ever brag about anything? right about it being included in this process at all he did the process independent of us right he sent his son and why because he loved us it didn't say for god saw all the work that you were doing so he sent this son. no it doesn't say that it says for god so love the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever should believe in him would not perish, but have everlasting life for God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. It was not because of us. It was because of his love, right? It was because of his love that he gave us this free, free, free gift, right? And all we had to do was believe. All we have to do is believe on him, right? That still makes it a free gift. Because, you know, even belief don't cost anything. It's just, it's free, right? Now, in the long run, you're believing and continuing to walk by that faith that you believe in. Remember, faith without works is dead. That that walking might cost something, right? Of course, it might cost you your old lifestyle and some people that you used to hang around. But as it relates to the salvation itself, that's because of God right? And in the same way, when God relents and answers your cry, when God hears you from heaven and turns and heals you and makes things good, when God is, is helping you as you are suffering to endure, that's because of his goodness, right? Not because of anything you did. It's just because he's a good God like that. He's a good father, right? You can't boast about his goodness about his turning towards your cry right it wasn't because you did a good cry it wasn't because you groveled in the ground so well right it's not because of us it's because he's a good father like that and we need to say thank you amen let's pray thank you father god for hearing our cry for pitying our every groan lord god Lord Jesus, forgive us for our sins, God. There are some people who are listening who may be going through a winter season, a season of feeling alone and cold and afraid and, and not knowing what where their next is coming from, God. Hear their hearts cry tonight, Lord Jesus. Hear them as they are desperate, desperately pleading for you, God. 
We know you have turned and you are relenting towards them, God. Let the answer get there faster, God. Every hold up in the heavenlies, God, let it be moved and parted out of the way for them, God, in the name of Jesus. Send them answers, send them help, Lord God, and put a rejoicing in their heart as they are trying to go through this season, Lord God. Every hit every evil every ugliness in their suffering god send them a rejoicing in their hearts god in the name of jesus we pray amen all right you guys um if you are um a person who has fallen away from the Lord. Maybe you are going through a season in your life and you you just you've walked away from God for whatever reason, or you have not made him the center like he should be in letting him sit on the throne of your heart and lead you and guide you into all truth through his Holy Spirit. Um go ahead and pray this prayer with me. Dear Lord Jesus, forgive us. God, forgive us for walking on our own path, on our own ways, Lord. You are a good and a mighty God. Jesus, have mercy on us, Lord God. Forgive us for all of our sins. Jesus, there's nobody like you. There's nobody like you, God. Help me to walk back in your ways, Jesus. Help me to get back on the right path with you, Lord God. Let my ways align up with your ways. Let my footsteps align up with you, Lord God. Help my ears to be turned on and listening for your voice at all times, God. Help me to make you truly Lord over my life. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. All right, you guys. If there is anybody out there who would like to receive Jesus as their Savior and Lord, go ahead and pray this prayer with me. But more than anything, believe it with all your heart as you confess it with your mouth. Dear Lord Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart. I make you my Lord and Savior. Jesus, I believe you died on the cross. And I believe you rose again on the third day so that I could be saved. Thank you, Father God, for doing this for me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right, you guys. Um, If you have prayed those prayers and you believe those prayers, then Holy Spirit has come into you and sealed you until the day of redemption. And no one can break that seal except Christ Jesus when he comes to redeem his church. The Holy Spirit is in you to lead you and guide you into all truth. And he's going to do just that. Amen. One of the um, things that Christ wanted us to do and not forsake was the fellowshipping of ourselves one to another. Go out, find a church home, find other believers to be around so that you can stay sharp in the word of God, as well as go out and um, tell other people about Christ and what he's done for you in your life. Amen. Also, go out and be baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. All right, you guys, take care and be blessed.